June Solstice Observations, Flat Earth and Globe Earth, Part 1, Angle of Elevation of the Solar Noon Sun. This measurement will give you pretty accurate measurements within a week or so of the June solstice. But for best results, do it right on the right date. This is the first of a three-part series. Uh, the next part will be on the azimuth of sunrise and, or sunset on the June solstice, and then the third will be on the path of the sun. A lot of this content was borrowed from two other videos, the Equinox Observation video and the December Solstice video, but it, truth be told, I actually cloned most of this from uh, a video I made a year ago, also on the June Solstice. I've just made a couple tweaks and a couple uh, modifications. Preparation and tools. First, you're going to find the date of the June Solstice. You're then going to look up the time of solar noon, and you're going to make a solar clinometer. So you can look up um, when the June solstice is going to be. This is actually from time and date. It shows a bunch of uh, dates uh, coming up. So this year, 2018, it's going to be June 21st. Next, you're going to look up the time of solar noon. And this is a screenshot from suncalc.org. Again, this is the 21st of June. It says that solar noon is going to be at 1.02. Uh, PM. They, they call that culmination. That's the when the sun is highest in the sky, 1.02 p.m. for Philadelphia. Or you can use another site called timeanddate.com, and they give uh, a lot of detail a month at a time. So I put in June 2018, and then if you scroll down, you find that it also tells you 1.02 p.m. for solar noon. Now we're going to make a solar clinometer. It's really easy. You just take a plastic protractor, a pencil, a piece of cardboard, some string, a clip, and some tape. And what you do is you stab the pencil through the cardboard, and then you take a protractor. I like the, to use the one that has a, a hole in it. And you tape the pencil onto the protractor, aligning very carefully the straight edge so that it's perfectly aligned. Uh, you don't even want to be a degree off, because if you're a de degree off, your readings will be a degree off. So you want to be, you want to be precise here. And then I like to run a, a string through the hole in the vertex and then tie it off with a little piece of a toothpick. That way the string, which is going to be your like your plumb bob, that will hang freely. So you get a nice accurate measurement. So your finished clonometer might look like this. I use a, a little clip or something at the end of the string uh, as my, my counterweight or my plumb bob. Now if you want even more accuracy, you can use a larger protractor. You could print one off the internet and maybe paste it onto a piece of uh, cardboard or, or cardstock. Or you can actually purchase a, a one of those large scale uh, protractors that's designed for either a chalkboard or a whiteboard. The disadvantage of one of those larger ones is that it doesn't actually have degree measurements. Um, it, you know, it just shows to the nearest uh, five degrees. But because you can take a photo of your um, the actual reading, you can interpolate using a using a scale, you know, using like counting pixels. You can actually interpolate, so you can actually get a very good reading. Now, Sean Hufford has suggested a modification. Instead of using a pencil, use a straw or a tube of paper, and then allow the sun to shine through the straw to hit a, a little screen, which he calls a backstop. Speaking of Sean Hufford, he's uh, designed an, an ingenious uh, method of, of uh, measuring uh, angles of elevation called the video clinometer. So I've got a video describing the uh, construction and calibration of this on my channel. Um, thanks to Sean Hufford for that. So now we're going to make a careful observation. And this is like super easy because you, you could go out there once at one time on one date and you measure the angle of elevation of the sun on solar noon on the solstice. So to use the solar clinometer, you simply point the pencil towards the sun. Now you'll see it will cast a shadow on the cardboard. So you point the pencil so that it is exactly pointed towards the sun so that the shadow disappears. And then you could take a reading off the protractor. Now if you use the, the Sean Hufford modification, you're going to be allowing the sun to shine through the straw or through the tube of paper for a perfect alignment. Now. You have to remember the, the protractor is upside down, so it may be difficult to take a reading. So what's the reading on this protractor? It's actually 68 degrees. And to take the actual reading, now 68 is not the angle of elevation because the protractor is hanging upside down. So we're going to take the complement of that. 90 minus the protractor reading, in this case for 68 degrees, our angle of elevation was 22 degrees. Now I did do this at sunset 
or near sunset. This was not taken at solar noon. So, so this has nothing to do with the, the June solstice. So the Hufford video clinometer, if you use this uh, device, you can actually take the reading right off the protractor. Um, if One way of thinking about this is if the clinometer was pointed at the horizon, what would the protractor read? It would read zero. So you can actually take the reading right, right off the scale. So now what we're going to do is we're going to do a globe earth analysis and then a flat earth analysis. And we're going to see how our measurement stacks up. So first off, on the, on the globe, on the June solstice, which is around June 20th or 21st, the, the North Pole is tilted uh, most towards the sun. Okay, the 23.4 degrees tilted towards the sun. Whereas on the flat earth map, the, uh, the sun is simply traveling in a circle around the North Pole above the Tropic of Cancer. Now, there are some flat earth uh, maps that don't use the, the Gleason's AE. Um, as, long as, the, as long as the sun is going around the North Pole, um, you, you should be able to do these calculations. So let's start off with a globe, globe Earth analysis. So this is uh, showing the equinox, where the equator is pointed directly towards the sun. And the North Pole, or the, the, the Earth's axis, is at 90 degrees to the, the direction of the sun's rays. So let's take an observer that's 30 degrees above the equator. We call that 30 degrees north latitude. If you extend this line through the Earth, uh, make a pole, the angle of the sun's rays will be at 30 degrees uh, to the vertical. So if you have an observer and, say, a flagpole, uh, the sun's rays are going to come in 30 degrees to that flagpole, um, to the vertical. This is not the angle of elevation. We need the complement of that. So this is actually a 60 degree angle of elevation for the sun. Now that describes the situation on the equinox. We want the June solstice. So what we're going to do is we're going to tilt the globe 23.4 degrees towards the sun. And when we do this, that changes the situation. So if we take our observer, and again, the yellow line, the yellow arrow, indicates the sun's direction on the equinox, but we've tilted the, the globe 23.4 degrees, so that means the sun's angle will be 23.4 degrees higher in the sky for this observer at 30 degrees north latitude. So what will that, what will that measurement be? Well, on the equinox, it was 60 degrees, but now it's going to be 60 plus 23.4. And it turns out this is true for everybody on the globe. The, on the June solstice, the sun will be 23.4 degrees northward from where it was on the equinox. Now, this works northern hemisphere, southern hemisphere, the tropics. No matter where you are on the globe, simply uh, move the sun 23.4 degrees northward from where it was on the equinox. That was the globe Earth analysis. Now let's do a flat Earth analysis. And again, just to remind you, on the June solstice, the sun is tracing a circuit around the North Pole above the Tropic of Cancer. And we're going to use uh, the AE projection. The most famous one is the, the Gleason's AE map. And I really just want to emphasize that there's a lot of uh, contention uh, about what's the correct map. Um, it, it really doesn't mat matter which map you use, as, so long as the sun does travel in a circuit around the North Pole and so long as you know the, uh, the elevation of the sun. So we're going to focus in on this right triangle, the right triangle formed by the North Pole, the Tropic of Cancer, and the sun. So let's zoom in to this right triangle. And this is actually to scale if the sun is 3,000 miles above the plane of the Earth. So we've marked off the Tropic of Cancer, we've got the North Pole, we've got the sun. And now we're going to put in our observer. Now we're going to switch over to Philadelphia, which is close to, to me, about 40 degrees north latitude. The first thing we want to do is we want to find D, which will be the distance to the tropic in miles. So how far is an observer who is at 40 degrees north latitude, how far is he from the Tropic of Cancer? Well, we take 40 and we subtract 23.4 to give us degrees, and then we're going to multiply by 69, there are 69 miles per degree latitude. That's going to give us D. And then we could form a new right triangle, where the green angle theta is the angle of elevation of the sun for an observer in Philadelphia. 
Now, how are we going to find uh, theta? A little bit of trig. Take the inverse tangent or the arc tangent of the quantity 3,000 divided by d. And I just want to emphasize that if you don't like the Gleason map, if you don't feel the sun is 3,000 miles in elevation, you are welcome to change those numbers um, as you like. So in summary, first we're going to find how many degrees we are from the Tropic of Cancer. We'll call that value t. In the northern hemisphere, uh, t will be our latitude minus 23.4 degrees. And if you end up with a negative number, just simply discard the negative sign. Uh, in other words, take the absolute value of this quantity. That'll be for anybody in the northern hemisphere. If you're in the southern hemisphere, you'll take your latitude and you'll add 23.4 degrees. All right, so this works north or south latitude. That gives you the number of degrees from the Tropic of Cancer. Now, on the globe Earth, your angle of elevation for the sun at solar noon will be 90 minus t. Very simple calculation. But on the flat Earth, you'll have to do an intermediate calculation. First, you'll find the distance to the tropic in miles, t times 69 miles to equal d. And then you'll find your angle of elevation will be the arctangent of 3,000 divided by d. So to keep all this math straight and actually to run the calculations simultaneously, flat Earth and globe Earth, uh, I've created a, a June solstice angle of elevation calculator using Google uh, Sheets. So if you have a Google account, if you have a Gmail account, uh, you can just um, use this calculator on your own. And it has exactly one input, and that is your latitude. And I've, I've made it um, as user-friendly as I could. If you know your exact latitude in degrees, minutes, and seconds, you can use the green and the blue fields. Or some, uh, some people know their latitude is a decimal degree, so you could just use the green field. For example, 40.037 or something like that. All right, and you also, it's required that you know what hemisphere you're in, otherwise the calculations will be off. So it, it runs the calculations both for the globe Earth and for the flat Earth, and it predicts the angle of elevation for the solar noon sun on the June solstice. All right, now the calculations may be close. So for somebody in Philadelphia, uh, the, the predictions are pretty close, 73.4 versus 69.1. That's only 4.3 degrees apart. So it's really important that when you get out there in the field, you make a very careful measurement. That's really the key, the key to my whole channel, is get outside and make careful measurements. And then so you're just going to compare it to the prediction and to help you determine the shape of the Earth. So if you would like to share your results with others, um, YouTube user Kara Diane has created message, message boards. They're at flatearthmath.boards.net and just go to the June solstice observations, uh, angle of elevation of the sun. So here's a nice quote from Mother Teresa. Spread love everywhere you go. Let no one ever come to you without leaving happier. Thank you.